Welcome to this session about the phases of strategic planning journey, from planning to measuring the impact. Today, we discuss a very important concept, the understanding that strategic planning in medical affairs is not merely about crafting plans, but about evolving those plans into demonstrated business impact. It's a journey that requires a deep understanding of each phase and a commitment to be integrated into the mindset of every medical affairs colleague. Strategic planning alone doesn't drive success. It's the ability to translate that planning into tangible results that will truly matter. This journey from the initial planning stages to the final measurement of the impact is not just a process that you will follow, but actually it's a transformational mindset. It's about turning insights into actions and strategies into outcomes. As we explore each phase of this journey, remember that our ultimate goal is to demonstrate the real world impact of our work. Understanding and implementing these phases is a task that is fundamental necessity for success in medical affairs. It is what ensures that our strategies are not just well intended, but are also effective and impactful. So let's start on this journey together with a focus on not just the planning strategically, but also on measuring and demonstrating the business impact the true business impact of our work. This understanding is crucial. It is what will drive us towards success and ensure that medical affairs continues to be a pivotal force in advancing healthcare and patient outcomes. Here is an overview of the strategic journey for medical affairs. A comprehensive pathway designed to ensure that every initiative is impactful aligned with the broader goals and responsive to the evolving healthcare landscape. This journey is divided into six different but interconnected phases, each playing a crucial role in the overall success of medical affairs activities. So let's take a brief look at each phase and then we will go into the details. We begin with the strategic planning setting the foundation. This is where we lay the groundwork by understanding the therapeutic landscape, defining the objectives, identifying the key stakeholders. It's about building a solid base informed by in-depth knowledge and insights. Next, we move to tactical planning, creating the roadmap. Here, we translate our strategic vision into detailed action plans. We outline the specific activities, timelines, resources, ensuring everything we do is aligned with the regulatory compliance and coordinated across different functions. Once our plans are set, we enter the implementation, putting the plans into action. This is where our strategies come to life, through the execution of the planned activities. We also begin monitoring our progress to ensure we are on track and making the desired impact. Following implementation, we focus on measuring the impact, understanding the outcomes. In this phase, we assess the effectiveness of our actions using defined metrics, regular assessment, and a commitment to learning from our experiences will help us to understand our impact and how we can improve. Communication is a key factor, which brings us to communication and reporting, sharing the success. Hearing, we regularly share updates and outcomes with both internal and external stakeholders. It's about demonstrating the value of medical affairs and ensuring our success are recognized and understood. Finally, we commit to continuous improvement, evolving the strategy with a feedback loop in place and a dedication to staying informed 
we continuously refine and adapt our strategy. This ensures that our approach remains relevant, effective, and aligned with the ever-changing healthcare environment. Together, these six phases form a dynamic and interactive process, guiding medical affairs teams from the initial planning stages to the continuous evolution of their strategies. It's a journey of strategic growth, learning, and adaptation, ensuring that medical affairs remain a pivotal force in advancing healthcare and patient outcomes. Moreover, it, re- it makes medical affairs a strategic pillar for the pharmaceutical industry. Let's now talk about each phase. Starting with the important first step for any successful medical affairs strategy, strategic planning, setting the foundation. This phase is about laying a solid foundation for all our future efforts, ensuring that every action we we take is informed, targeted, and effective. Beginning by the first component of this step, which is understanding the landscape. This means diving deep into the therapeutic area we are focusing on. We need to understand the disease state, the current treatment landscape, the unmet medical and patient needs, and how our competitors are positioned. This is not just about gathering data, it's about gaining and understanding information that will inform every decision we make moving forward. It's about seeing the bigger picture and our place within it. And then, next, we turn this understanding into clear, achievable objectives. These are not just any goals. They are carefully crafted to align with our organization's broader goals and the specific needs of the healthcare community we serve. Whether it's enhancing disease understanding or improving patient outcomes or establishing our organization as a thought leader in a specific therapeutic area, each objective is a stepping stone towards making a meaningful impact. These are SMART goals. But as we know, we don't work alone. And that's why identifying key stakeholders is an integral part of our strategic planning. These are the key opinion leaders, healthcare professionals, patients, regulatory bodies, and even our internal teams like commercial, marketing, research and development, and others. Each of these groups has unique needs expectations and preferences for how they receive and share information. Understanding these groups and their needs is critical. It allows us to tailor our approach, ensuring that our efforts resonate with those we aim to engage and influence. So in this phase, the first phase of strategic planning, We are setting the course for everything that follows. It's about being insightful and strategic and deep. As we move forward, remember that this foundation will guide our actions, ensuring that all are not just well-intentioned, but also well-informed and strategically sound. As we move into the second phase of our strategic journey, we transition from the broad vision of strategic planning to the focused and detailed area of tactical planning. This is where our broad objectives are transformed into a concrete and actionable roadmap, guiding us from where we are to where we aspire to be. First, Let's talk about developing our action plans. For each objective we have set, 
we will craft a detailed plan that outlines the specific activities we need to undertake. But it's more than just a list of tasks. Each action plan will include precise timelines, the resources required, and the team members responsible for each activity. This level of detail is not just about accountability. It's also about creating a clear path forward with every step carefully thought out and planned. However, as we chart our course, we must always keep in mind the regulatory landscape we operate within. Every activity we plan, every step we take must align with regulatory guidelines and ethical standards. It is not negotiable. Adhering to these standards is crucial in maintaining the credibility and the integrity of the medical affairs function. It's about doing things right, not just doing the right things. But once again, we don't work in isolation, and that's why cross-functional coordination and collaboration is a critical component of our tactical planning as well. We will actively coordinate with other departments to ensure that our plan is not just a medical affairs plan, but an organizational plan. Whether it's aligning with marketing on product messaging, or collaborating with research on clinical trial data dissemination, our efforts will be integrated and aligned within the broader organizational strategy. This is not just about synergy, it's about creating a unified force where the sum of our efforts is greater than its parts. So in the second phase, in this phase, We are creating a roadmap that is detailed, compliant, and collaborative. Once again, detailed, compliant, and collaborative. It's a roadmap that will guide us step by step towards our objectives. As we start on this phase, let's remember that the strength of our plan lies in the details, but also lies in our commitment to executing it with precision, integrity, and collaboration. As we enter the third phase of our strategic journey, we shift our focus from planning to action. Implementation is where our carefully laid plans and detailed roadmaps come to life. It's where strategy meets execution and our collective efforts begin to make tangible impact. So, we are executing the plan. Each activity outlined in our tactical plan will be set into motion. For some of us, this might involve engaging with key opinion leaders sharing our latest research, gathering their invaluable insights. For others, it might mean organizing educational events that not only inform healthcare professionals, but also empower them to make better treatment decisions. And for many, it will involve disseminating new clinical data, ensuring that our scientific discoveries are communicated accurately and effectively. Each of these activities is a critical piece of the large puzzle, contributing to our overaching goals. But as we put our plans into action, we must also keep a vigilant eye on our progress. Continuous monitoring is key. It's not just about checking off completed tasks, but more into ensuring that each activity is moving us closer to our objective. By regularly comparing our progress against the plan, we can quickly identify any deviations or delays. This is not only to find the defaults or mistakes, but also to be agile and responsive. When we spot an issue early, we can take timely corrective actions and adjust our course as needed to stay on track. 
So the implementation is a very dynamic and active phase. It's where we see our plans come to life and where we begin to see the fruits of our labor. As we start on this phase, we approach it with a sense of purpose and urgency. We be diligent in executing our activities, vigilant in monitoring our progress and agile in making adjustments. Our commitment and action during this phase are very important to turn our strategic vision into a successful reality. And as we move forward into the fourth and critical phase of our strategic journey, we focus on measuring the impact and understanding the outcomes. This phase is about reflection and evaluation, where we assess the effectiveness of our actions and understand the real difference we have made. It's a phase that closes the loop, turning our experiences into insights for the future. It starts as we begin by defining our metrics. These are not just the numbers, they are the signposts that tell us how well we are doing. So don't look at them as only numbers. They measure our progress and success. For each activity we have undertaken, we need clear, relevant metrics that can measure its impact. This might be quantitative data, like the number of key opinion leaders we have engaged, or the increase in patient enrollment in clinical trials. Or it might be a qualitative feedback, capturing the perceptions, experiences of our stakeholders. And importantly, we look at the outcome-based measures, such as changes in prescribing behaviors or improvements in patient outcomes and care. These metrics are our compass, guiding us towards our true north of making a meaningful business impact. But defining metrics is just the start. Regular assessment is what brings them to life. This is not one time task, but an ongoing process of continuous evaluation. Regularly, we will assess the impact of our activities against these metrics creating a rhythm of reflection and reporting. This regular check-in keeps us accurate, accountable, and ensures that we are on the right track and allows us to share our progress with all stakeholders in a meaningful way. It's the process that fosters transparency and trust, showing that we are not just busy, we are making a real difference. In other words, we are really impacting the business. And finally, the most crucial part of this phase is learning and adapting. Early assessment gives us valuable insights. We will learn what's working well and what's not. We will uncover the strategies that are making an impact and areas where we need to improve. This learning is not only used for reporting, or for sharing the information, but more for adapting. We will use the knowledge to refine our strategies and tweak our plans and make informed decisions about the future. It's a cycle of continuous improvement where each cycle makes us more effective and more impactful than the previous one. As we navigate into the fifth phase of our strategic journey, we will focus here on communication and reporting or sharing, a crucial element that ensures our successes and learnings are shared and understood in the right way. This phase is about storytelling, where we articulate the narrative of our journey, the progress we have made, the impact we have created, and the lessons we have learned. 
It's about sharing our success and ensuring that the value of the medical affairs function is seen and appreciated as impactful. In this phase, we start with talking about internal communication. This is where we keep our colleagues and internal stakeholders informed about what we are doing, how we are doing it, and what results we are seeing. Regular updates are not just formality, they are an integral part of maintaining transparency and building trust within the organization. They demonstrate the ongoing value of medical affairs function, showcasing how our activities contribute to the broader organizational goals, whether it's through regular meetings, reports, or digital dashboards, Our internal communications ensures that everyone is on the same page and recognizes the contributions of the medical team, or once again, the impact of the medical team. But our communication doesn't stop within the walls of our organization. External communication is equally important, where appropriate, we share the impact of our activities with the outside world. This might involve publishing the results of a successful collaboration with key opinion leaders in scientific journals, or sharing the outcomes of a patient education initiative, for example, at different conferences or through media. By doing so, we will build the reputation of the organization and medical affairs but also you will contribute to the broader scientific and medical community, which is very important. Our external communication helps in establishing our organization as a thought leader, one that is making a tangible difference in the healthcare environment. So in phase five, communication and reporting, to share the success, communication is the key. We are not just sharing, we are sharing stories, stories of success, of impact, of growth. As we engage in this phase, let's do it with a commitment to clarity, dedication, and transparency, and a focus on the narrative. The narrative is very important because, again, we are not just sharing numbers, we are sharing stories, stories of the impact. Our communication is a powerful tool, one that can inspire, influence, influence, and inform others. And then we come to the final phase of strategic planning, of strategic journey. We focus here on continuous improvement and evolving the strategy. This phase is about embracing change, learning from our experiences and constantly seeking ways to do better. A commitment to never being relaxed, to always strive for excellence and to ensure that our strategy remains as dynamic and responsive as the world around us. So let's discuss the importance of establishing a feedback loop because this is a system that allows us to gather and incorporate continuous input input from both internal and external stakeholders. It's about listening actively and attentively to the voices of those we serve and those we work with. This feedback loop is very important. It is the raw material that we use to refine and improve our strategy over time. Whether it's a praise that confirms we are on the right track, constructive criticism that points out where we can do better, or new ideas that open up unexplored possibilities, every piece of feedback matters. Every piece of feedback is a gift that helps us grow and improve. But gathering feedback is not enough on its own. As we all know, we must also commit to staying informed. 
The world of healthcare is ever changing with new scientific discoveries, evolving regulatory environments, and shifting stakeholder needs. So, to ensure that our strategy remains relevant and effective, we must keep our finger on the pulse of these changes. This means staying abreast of the latest developments in our therapeutic area, understanding changes in the regulatory policies, and keeping updated with the evolving needs and expectations of our stakeholders. This is about being proactive, not reactive, and ensuring that our strategy is always aligned with the latest and most relevant information. So in this phase of continuous improvement, we are not just looking to maintain our current level of success. We are looking to build on it, seeking to evolve adapt and to grow it's a commitment to a cycle of learning and improvement where each day brings us closer to being the best we can in conclusion medical affairs from strategic planning to measuring impact this journey is a dynamic and continuous process It requires deep understanding of therapeutic areas, clear and achievable objectives, detailed tactical plans, effective implementation, regular assessment of the impact, continuous adaptation based on feedback and changing circumstances. By following this approach, medical affairs teams can ensure that their activities are strategically aligned, effectively implemented, and have a measurable business impact on medical science and patient care. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.